everyone. Welcome back to Her Campus and American University's podcast, Miseducation, where we chat about topics that we find both passion and relevancy in. So despite all the craziness 2020 has brought us, we're excited and ready to get back into this podcast, and we hope you all enjoy it too. So today on mic, we have me, Maggie Schutte. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am um, graduating in one year now, and I'm an international studies major. And for her campus, I work on the podcast and I work on the print mag. Okay, our design director. <laughs> or no, you're our publishing director, right? Publishing director, yeah. The same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Abby. I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior and I'm graduating in December now, which is exciting. Um, I study women's gender sexuality studies and sociology, and I'm the president of her campus for a couple yeah. more months. Yeah. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about sex work on OnlyFans, and we're going to be chatting with a sex worker who uses OnlyFans to create content to understand the perks and the flaws of using the platform. Yeah, so before we start with the interview, we're going to go over some fast facts about the topic. So OnlyFans is a subscription-based platform that allows content creators to collect a fee from their fans to see their content. The content creator receives 80% of the revenue and OnlyFans keeps the remaining 20%. Subscribers can also message and tip content creators to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with them. And then so with that, like they can message them and tell like the OnlyFans um, content creators what they want and they can create like specific tailored content to their subscribers. So that's where they get like most of their money from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and OnlyFans has pretty much become synonymous with sex work, but actually that is just one of the app's markets. It also has a platform for fitness influencers and musicians. According to New Statesman, after the Beyonce remix of Megan Thee Stallion Savage, where Queen Bey mentions OnlyFans, there was actually an in a 15% increase in visitors. Yeah, and, and this has also led to celebrities using OnlyFans as a hobby. Um, one of the most notable drop-ins was Bella Thorne. She offered nudes in exchange for $200, and 50,000 people took her up on that offer. Um, but mass hysteria broke when Bella sent lingerie pictures instead of nudes, causing thousands of refund requests. Uh, this incident also led to significant changes in the OnlyFans platform. Um, tips are now capped at $200 during a content creator's first four months, and now creators have to wait 21 days to be paid as opposed to the seven days that was previously standard. For many content creators on OnlyFans, this is a significant portion of their income, and these changes have negatively impacted their experiences. We are about to explore how the platform has for sex workers due to its new notoriety with an OnlyFans content creator, Faith. I go by Faith Haley, which is my actual first and middle name, but that's what I like use for my online platforms. So, very cool. Okay. My okay. pronouns are she, her, by the way. Yes. Um, okay, so how long have you been creating content on OnlyFans? Um, I started about two months ago. I was only super active for like the first two weeks. Um, and then here and there, it kind of took mm -hmm. yeah. And then you've done other sex work since 2015? Yep. I was on my free cams, which is a good, good platform to use. Yeah, I like it a lot. There's a lot of perks with them that they'll do for you as a company, like send you shit. They sent me a dildo with their logo on it. They sent me like outfits. Um, they sent me like a ring light for my phone. Tons of stuff. That's they sent me to a show and stuff. That's really fun. And so why did you start using OnlyFans? I started doing OnlyFans because I needed quick money. And I was also really curious about it anyways, because I had already been doing sex work and then this platform became super mainstream. So I was like, I kind of just wanted to check it out and see if it really is as good as everybody was saying. And so what are some of like the benefits and negatives of OnlyFans? The benefits is that you, it is a really easy way to make money because like the consumer base is there. And they are looking for you, not, you don't have to necessarily go looking for fans as hard as they have to. 
look for you. And then the negatives, oh, shit. The pay system. The whole seven-day rolling system that they had beforehand, like, I didn't like that. Where you make whatever you make, you know, say I made $25 this day. I have to wait seven days. Through that seven day period, now I've made a thousand dollars and I have to wait another seven days, which is, makes it two weeks. But as you said, now you have to wait 21 days. So that really bothers me. I probably can't. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a really long time to wait, like way longer than even an actual, like, a nine to five job. Right. Like, I only have to wait two weeks to get paid at my job. So twenty one days is like almost a full month. It's almost yeah. So yeah, I feel like that's definitely gonna discourage people from using OnlyFans. Um, so what kind of content do you create? I make um like tiered content. So when I sit down and actually make content i'll do a set where i'll like take a bunch of pictures in some lingerie that's what i'll post on my page and then i'll take you know more risque photos nudes all to make like videos in the set of me like masturbating or whatever um and all that stuff costs increasingly more money so and so how much does a photo set versus, like, a video cost? A photo set, usually I do, like, $5 a picture. Um, if it has, like, graphic nudity, like, basically, if it has my vagina showing, <laughs> you have to pay, like, $20 for just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, for, like, a, a masturbation video, I think I sell them for around 25 And then I have, like, one sex tape that I sell for $40. Yeah, That's which is a good chunk of money. Right. Um, how many hours a week do you think you work on your content? So the first two weeks that I did it, when I was getting started, like whenever you get started, no matter what kind of sex work it is, like right off the bat is when you have to put work in because you have to establish some kind of fan base. Um, so the first couple of weeks, I would probably spend like maybe an hour or two in the morning making content and then the rest of the day I would be on my phone on OnlyFans like marketing it, selling it, talking to people, building fan base. Yeah. And so is OnlyFans or like sex work in general your main income or like a supplemental income? For me it's always been a supplemental income except for like a few periods where I was just like web camming. Mm -hmm. But I use it to supplement my income. For yeah. sure. And how much money do you think you make every month? Um, if I kept up on it, because, like, I was active for two weeks, basically, on OnlyFans. And then after that, it was more, like, here and there whenever I felt like it. But the first few weeks, I made, like, 1000 the first week, 800 the second week. And now I just collect, like, subscription fees for people who just hop on my page. Mm -hmm. And how is that compared to, like, what you think you made camming? Canning, I like clearly I made more because I've done mm -hmm. it over the span of like years. But as far as like how fast you make money, you definitely make faster cash on OnlyFans and definitely a lot more cash. Yeah. So. Yeah. Would do you think you would recommend OnlyFans to other people or would you recommend like a different platform instead of OnlyFans? I am sketched to recommend OnlyFans because of the current situation with they've given buyers more power to like, you know, they can basically return your product. And it's a, it's a visual product that they're buying. Potentially they can use it for like 20 minutes and then return it now, which is like something that is sketchy and I'm lying to that. Um, Obviously, the 21-day pay period thing, you know, the whole Bella situation kind of messed OnlyFans up. I've heard that a lot of people are switching to, like, Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, there was another platform that somebody had mentioned, but I would just say, like, do it at your own risk right now just because things are kind of changing on that platform. So, but there are a ton 
of similar platforms or slightly different ones that mm -hmm. I recommend the sex work part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Use the platform at your own risk. Yeah. And so what's your opinion on stars like Bella Thorne using OnlyFans? Um, she definitely blurred a lot of lines. And I think she scammed people to be really blatant with you because she offered nudity and they paid for that and it wasn't. And now it's messing things up for a lot of people who that to her was supplemental income. That she really, really didn't need, because like, what's supplemental income to a millionaire? Mm -hmm. um, and it's messing up people whose whole livelihood is only fans. And when you think about it, it's like you're used to getting paid on your seven day rolling basis. Now you have to wait 21 days. Who knows who's in a good enough position financially for that to even be okay? Yeah, you know. Um, and then, like, yeah, a lot of, like, big celebrities will use OnlyFans. Like, for example, I follow this influencer. Her name is T on mm -hmm. Instagram. And she made an OnlyFans, and she literally posts, like, Instagram pictures on it. I, right, that are free already. Yeah. That's so weird. Which, I mean, like, that's not shady, I guess. Yeah. Because you're allowed to post as little or as much as mm -hmm. you want, but... Yeah. Just why did you need to do that? Yeah. That. Yeah. And I know earlier you were talking about, like, the integrity of sex work. That was yeah. really interesting. Do you want to say a little more about that? Um, I just think that sex work is an integrity-based, like, system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we lose that integrity and we scam people, it gives us less credibility in a business where we don't have much credibility to begin with. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to foster like positive transactional relationships with your fans when there's integrity mm -hmm. in your business. So yeah. I really don't like, I feel like she gave sex workers a bad name in doing that when We've already had to work so hard to come as far as we have mm -hmm. in, you know, acceptance in society mm -hmm. and being yeah. able to work with these without Yeah. Anymore, so. Especially if she was just doing it for, like, research for a movie role. That's pretty absurd. Um, let's see. So do people in your life know that you use OnlyFans? Yes, yes. Pretty much everybody in my life knows that I do it because I promote now on my like personal social media. Mm -hmm. I didn't back in the day whenever I first started. People found out though, I mean, you know, which was whatever. My family's definitely not cool with it. My siblings are like, you know, it's cool with whatever. Yeah. But my parents aren't really cool with it. I don't really care because they're not cool with all the good things in life. So. <laughs> Did someone like find you on like a webcamming site or? I don't even remember how they found out. I am kind of like an overshare, so yeah. When I was racking up all this money, I probably just got a little pity <laughs> and like. Well, I also wasn't working at the time, mm -hmm. and I had money, and my parents were just like, "You don't have a job, so like, how are you paying all your bills?" And I'm just like. Well, you know, I do this thing. So, yeah, I'm pretty honest with my parents no matter what. Yeah. Like, I make my decisions as an adult. Yeah. So. Yeah. And honestly, they should be happy for you making banks, so. Yeah. They definitely didn't react to OnlyFans as bad as they did the webcam stuff just yeah. because they're like, oh, well, I guess that's her thing. <laughs> and do you... Do people that you know, like, personally follow you on your OnlyFans? How does that, like, feel? Yeah. Um, it felt weird at first because, like I said, with webcamming, I never promoted on my personal social media. So when I did start promoting on my social media, it was, like, there was a lot of people that I never knew that I was, like, interacting with that wanted to see, like, me naked and doing, like, sexual content. So, I mean, sometimes it's a little bit strange, 
Like I had someone introduce themselves because, you know, their usernames usually aren't the same as their other social media. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I was like your um, old roommate's brother. I'm like, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so it's a little bit weird sometimes. It's definitely a confidence boost when you think about it, though, because it's like, wow, I interact with all these people and they think I'm like, hot. Cool. <laughs> Why did you stop webcamming? Um, just because that is more time consuming. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna webcam, that has to be kind of like a nine to five. Yeah. You don't have to do it that long, but like every day you need to get on at like the same time. Mm-hmm. Because the same guys will be on at the same time and they will be looking for you at that time. <laughs> uh, with OnlyFans, it's just like social media, so I can inbox people all day long throughout mm-hmm. everything else. Yeah. So like, like shopping at the mall, like, just like texting literally. people. Well, no, I'll be at my like my day job. Yeah. And they'll be like, "What are you doing?" Like they know I have only fans, and I'll be like, "Oh, really? Nothing." Just like <laughs> you know, working. Yeah. <laughs> and do you think that like attitudes towards sex work has changed since you've started sex work in 2015? Yeah, hundred percent so vastly much um before like if I would talk with like the average girl about like oh yeah I do webcam stuff they'd be like oh that's kind of weird like I don't think I could do that and these days if you say it girls are more like really how much do you make like what do you do (laughs) how does that whole platform work like let me know more and of course like OnlyFans is super mainstream like we have a mainstream sex worker like platform yeah so yeah most people are a lot more positive about it now than, yeah it's a lot more secretive that's not even that long ago it's kind of crazy yeah it feels like 2015 was yesterday yeah, right really. before the last election and now we're coming up on another that's kind of crazy <laughs> um what are some tips that you have for people who are interested in getting involved in like only fans or just other like online sex work um market yourself because especially with how mainstream it is people are looking for you like not just your body they want like a personality within it and a certain aesthetic and like that's what they're really paying for because they can obviously get needs anywhere mm-hmm. so kind of just be true to yourself and your interests and market yourself that way Definitely mark yourself on Twitter. If you hashtag OnlyFans or like OnlyFans Babe, there's like a million hashtags. You will get retweeted by like bots and stuff that already have like a bunch of buyers following them, stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that is all I have. Thank you so much for being willing to sit down and chat with me about this. I really appreciate it. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Legalize all sex work. Yes, <laughs> legalize sex work. I love it. So now we've heard from Faith about some like the positives and negatives of using OnlyFans and her experiences with it. Let's just talk about like what do you think about famous people using OnlyFans? Like, do you think it's a positive or do you think it's a negative? I think, like, on one hand, it can be, like, destigmatizing because they're kind of, like, normalizing it. But on the other hand, they're kind of, like, taking away, like, subscribers and money from smaller content creators on OnlyFans. Um, yeah. Like, examples of people who do it are, like, Cardi B, Bella Thorne, Tyga, Black China. There's, like, a ton of famous people who use OnlyFans, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, I haven't heard of Tyga before. That's a new one. Um, I would, I would agree. Like what you're saying about normalizing it, that is definitely a plus, but also it's not like it's something they need to do to make money. And, and so I feel like definitely it's a good outlet for people who need something to make money on the side, you know, and it's a relatively easy way to do that. So yeah, for me, I'm just like, why does a multimillionaire like Cardi B or Bella Thorne need to use OnlyFans? Yeah, I guess like, one reason Bella Thorne started using it was for research for a role, which 
I think it's like pretty disrespectful because like there are actual people on there who like yeah yeah pay bills and stuff so that's like pretty crazy and faith brought up a good point like why not just interview actual sex workers instead of like pretending to be a sex worker when you're yeah definitely seems like it's some sort of attention based thing instead of necessity i guess yeah and especially since like she kind of like messed up the platform for a lot of people i feel like that's just also disrespectful yeah yeah definitely I don't know maybe it's like helpful in some ways but maybe it's like more harmful than helpful I kind of feel like but also just depending on the people who are (laughs) the celebrities who are doing it you know yeah exactly I think it's interesting how only has allowed like sex workers to continue working during COVID I think that's like originally when COVID started I saw a lot of stuff on like um twitter and instagram of like sex workers like dropping their like only fans handles because like it's a safe way for them to do it during the pandemic mm-hmm. so i think that's pretty interesting yeah i mean it's definitely one of the better jobs to have during the pandemic i guess because you don't have to switch to working at home you're already working at home yeah um, yeah and also their business probably went up a little bit as well because yeah they're staying at home exactly they can't like go out and hook up with people so they need to get some sort of fix yeah yeah and it's very like especially because it's personalized too so it's kind of like you have an online girlfriend but like yeah 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 (laughs) I don't know I think it's very interesting because like you know I bet like some sex workers like would still be like going out and like doing like street-based work if they had to during COVID because like if you don't have any money to feed like your kids or yourself and like because sex workers since it's not legal like sex work isn't legal they probably didn't get a COVID stimulus check so because it didn't like it didn't seem like they were working yeah so that was probably like a good alternative yeah definitely like online yeah. school but online sex work oh yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah all right so now do you want to move to our lighthearted game oh I love this a lot okay yes okay so <laughs> Now that we've discussed all this, we know a little bit more about OnlyFans and the positives and negatives of, like, famous people using OnlyFans. We're going to do a fun, lighthearted game where we're going to be discussing which celebrity we would rather watch on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Cardi B or Bella Thorne. So this one, I think I would have to go with Cardi B purely because of what Bella Thorne did on the platform so yeah. that is where my bias is cancel because of that yeah I agree and Cardi B used to be like a stripper so oh yeah it has got to be really off the hook so yeah I would yeah. expect it would be better yeah <laughs> um, okay what about Tyga or Tyler Posey okay well this one's hard but I feel like Tyga because I don't know if you've seen his TikToks, but no. they're just always, not that this relates, they're just always so funny and so much better than everyone else's. So I feel like the same effort would be in yeah. the fans. So, yeah, I feel like I used to watch Teen Wolf and I don't really know much about Tyga. Like, I don't think I've ever listened to his music or anything. I, yeah, so I don't really know much about him. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I would pick Tyler Posey because maybe he would do like some cool. Like old stuff. Yeah, like maybe it's like old props. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. That's, that's a good point, actually. Okay. Creative. I'm kind of divided now, but okay. <laughs> um okay, so then next we have Black China or Tana. How do you say it? Mojo? Mojo, yeah, I don't know. Okay. The only thing I know about her is the whole like Tana Con debacle. Yes. In- she YouTube star and then Black China is 
she was married to one of the Kardashians. Right. I don't know much about pop culture, so this is hard. I see, um, neither do I. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Black China, I feel like that would be more fun. It'd be more interesting. I feel like Tana's yeah. pretty boring, and I don't like her. Okay, yeah, I don't really have much opinion to offer on this one, but I think you're right. I think Black China would be just more exciting somehow. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Also, I feel like that, and that's more exciting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> already <laughs> step up. Okay, and then last one we have Amber Rose or Austin Mahone, right? That's how you say it. Yeah. Okay. And he's the one that's been dating Miley Cyrus. Oh. So, like, I- that's interesting but like amber rose she's the yeah. one i wait give me one she's second. Like, i'm pretty sure she might be bi or lesbian and she's like somewhat of a queer icon from what i understand um oh, this is not who i thought it was okay yeah this, this person yeah that's amber rose yeah okay. she also has the short hair like that's her with long hair. I feel like she's more like known for her like short hair. Yeah. Any any verdicts? So I don't know. This is tough because Austin, if he's dating Miley Cyrus, like there's got to be, be included interesting stuff there. So that's always a plus. But also, I feel yeah. like in general, I feel like Amber Rose. I don't know much about her, but. I feel like women generally, they know how to play to an audience better than men, especially with this kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I agree. I but there's also my, Miley Cyrus, like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's a toss up. I feel like, yeah, I'm also split on this. I feel like both. I'm cool. just going to say both. <laughs> both. Yeah. Both. I'm also like, curious how, like, celebrity, like, OnlyFans works because like would they let people direct message them and like would they actually do like custom content because they're like yeah that's true I wonder if they they just make yeah because I mean people are trying to do that anyway so I don't know maybe they just mass produce (laughs) mass produce generic things <laughs> generic they might maybe they have send it out <laughs> maybe they hire someone to manage their only fans for them that would be that, really funny that would be funny i kind of i feel like that's what happens probably oh my goodness. all right well anyway that just about <laughs> sums up this episode thanks so much for listening And stay tuned for more episodes coming up. As usual, we'd like to thank our executive producer, Wyatt Foster, our co-hosts, me, Abby Henry, and Maggie Shoot. Did I say that right? Shooty, but you were close. Shooty, okay. (laughs) Our co-hosts, me, Abby Henry, and Maggie Shooty. Our editor, Isabel Thompson. For more from Her Campus AU and to keep up with Miss Education, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Her Campus AU and check out AU Her Campus articles on the Her Campus page or in the American University tab. Stay tuned for more episodes. Like, subscribe. <laughs>